Welcome to Praise Chapel Revival Live. I am Brother Fernando, and I get the privilege, man, I get the privilege and the honor to speak about tithes, and it, it is a privilege. I, I love it, you know. I'm grateful that the Lord is using me in this, using me and my wife. And honestly, the Lord has been doing so much through us because the Lord put something in our hearts, and we've been running with it. We've been running with it, and it's just opened up so much stuff. And I've been praying on it, when to share it. When the time comes, I will. When the Lord speaks, I will. And amen. So let's, 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 let's get into this. So if you want to tithe and offer today, you can go to praisechapelrevival.com. And there's a link up there that it says tithe and offering. You can't miss it. And I always like to congratulate those on behalf of Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard on behalf of Pastor Armando and Sister Veronica. I congratulate you, man, for continuing in the faith, continuing to be, to continuing to allow yourself to be guided with your finances, to continuing to tithe and continuing to offer. You know, they will be used. They will be used for the furtherance of the kingdom. That I can guarantee. I, I guarantee. I guarantee. So let's get into this today. You know, we've heard... We've all heard a, a ton of tithing speakers, you know, just like I have heard a lot of sermons, you know, from my pastor, Pastor Armando, Pastor Richard, Pastor Johnny, you know, Pastor Louie, Pastor Scott. You know, these teachings that we have heard, they are vital to the furtherance of our kingdom, to the furtherance of us and of our future and of our life. Our lives testify that the, the Word of God, you know, it helps, it molds, it saves. And it has been a beautifully tough journey in my life ever since I've been serving Christ. Beautifully tough. The Word teaches us to love, not to hate, forgive like your Father has forgiven you, to put away selfishness, to put others' needs before our own, to consider others' needs before our own, you know, to lend to the poor, the, the Word Man, you, you could go on about what God teaches us through these words. And we have been called to be doers. We have been called to be doers of the word. Like it says in James 1.22. And why are we doers of the word? Except when it comes to tithing. You know, we're doers of the ministry. We're, you know, pastor calls you. You know, you're there. Oh yeah, pastor. I'll be there real quick. You know, a brother calls you, asks for help. You know, oh yeah, I'll be there real quick. You know, if anything is needed at the church, a lot of us are ready to jump on it. You know, ready to do it. If there's things that need to be cleaned, a lot of us, you know, are ready to do it. You know, teachers, a lot of us are ready to do it. But the moment we hear the Lord speak and say, bring your whole tithe, we completely ignore him. And everything else, we're hot. Everything else, we're hot for the Lord. We're zealous. We're faithful. We're obedient. We're trustworthy. We're teachable. We read. We pray. We worship. I'm going to take this from Pastor Scott. We stay fat. We stay faithful. We stay available. And we stay teachable. But we think we are hot. Because we do all these things. We do all these other things. And not knowing... We are lukewarm because there is a missing link. And I had a difficult time putting this together. I did. I wanted to go this route. I wanted to go that route. And I heard a scripture from my mom spoke last night. And I'm going to run with it. You know, I and I even tried to, I even tried to go those other routes that I wanted to go to this morning and it just wasn't happening. But the moment I started to go to the moment I started to take this route of this scripture Man, everything just flowed. Everything just moved. And I know it's of the Lord. And the scripture reads today. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. This is our scripture for today. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, 
miserable, poor, blind, and naked. God knows your works, church. And when he says works, that means everything, including tithing. He knows if you're holding out on him. And then we come and we say this famous line. And I've said it, I've said it lots of times. We've all said it in our time. And this is the line. The Lord knows my heart. Church, and you're absolutely right. The Lord does know your heart. The Lord knows your heart. When you're being tight with your finances, when you feel the spirit inside of you telling you to give and you don't. I've been there, church. I'm not talking about something that just doesn't happen. I've been there. When the spirit says to help that person, to give them $100 and we get 50 or we get 20 and then we say, the Lord knows my heart. You know, when the spirit says, don't spend that tithe and we do spend it, you know, and then we say, the Lord knows my heart. You know, I, I deserve this. I've been working. I've worked all week. My family deserves this. Why doesn't my family, my family deserves nice things too. I've said all this stuff. I'll get them next week. And you know what happens comes next week? You forget about the Lord. You forget about that Lord. You spend that tax and the money that you did want to use, it's needed for something else. Because you got out of line. You messed up what was, you messed up the course. And I wanted to share that with you today, Lord. Church, that let's stay hot for the Lord, man. Not lukewarm. Let's stay hot in our prayers, in our reading, in our faithfulness, in our obedience, and in our tithing. Yes, it is a part of our everyday walk. And let us never say that we are rich because of wealth. Like it says in, like it says in 17, I am rich because I am wealthy. You're rich because you have received undeserved grace and mercy and forgiveness from a Christ that took our place on a cross that we persecuted, hated, and turned our backs on in the past. That is because why you are rich. Everybody has their their different meanings of rich. Some people will say they're rich because they're wealthy. I say I'm rich because of that, because of the Lord, what He has done for me in my life, because I have a beautiful wife that stands by my side. I got kids that, that the Lord covered them when so much stuff was going on around them. You know that the Lord brought me out of all my miseries when I cried out to him. My life has fully turned around. And a lot of us are, and a lot of our lives have turned completely turned around. And that's why because and that's because we are rich because we are with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank those Lord who are tithing. And Father God, I rebuke greed, I rebuke selfishness. I rebuke pride, Father God, when it comes to people that don't want to tithe, that want to hold on to their finances, Lord Jesus. I know that this is the core of the reasons why we won't tithe, Lord. I know this. There are, there are times where it is tough, where we have to pay our bills and pay your bills. We have, when we take care of our responsibilities. But there's also a lot of times, Lord, where we hold out. And I pray that my brethren, my church, Father, the body, that we will not hold out on you, Lord Jesus Christ, that we will give our whole tithe, Father God, so we can have that blessing, Lord Jesus Christ, that we won't be able to contain. I pray for those that are, for the tithes that are received today, that they will go to the furtherance of your kingdom, to the furtherance of building your church, Lord. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory today, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives, for always making a way, and for always coming through, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. So I mean, church. So I get the honor to call up a man of God, your pastor, my pastor man, a man that you know, a long time ago stepped out in faith. And here we are. Here we are. Pray Shop Revival Oxford. Your pastor, Pastor Armando Carrillo. Stay blessed, brother. Praise the Lord. Welcome, Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard. It's a blessing uh, to be here once again. I'm, um, I'm excited to to speak the word of God that God has put in my heart and elaborate uh, on the scriptures. And uh, I'm also excited for those who already have opened uh, their ministry to, to the people. Uh, let's continue to pray for them and, and our turn will come. Uh, we're going to get together this week with the leadership and staff and, and talk about when is the right time for us. Uh, we'll, we'll be aiming, our aim is to open up next month, but we'll reconsider, we'll consider, we'll pray on it. 
So we will release a statement uh, probably coming this coming week so that way we can shoot for a date so we can get this going and, and do what we have to do as, as men and women of God. Uh, but again, I want to thank you and, and appreciate you for, for tuning in. Uh, I, have a, I have a word that uh, I know God has given me uh, for the church, for the people, for those that, that God has pulled uh, to the camera, to the phone, uh, has taken the, the, the time to, to commit herself, to, to uh, have their ears open, uh, their eyes, just, just to see. And right now, before we get started, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for, for giving us the breath of life, Lord. We just thank you, Father, for allowing us, God, to continue what, what we can do for, for your honor and for your glory, Father. We just were careful to give you all the praise, God, and and we pray right now that you would continue, God, to work out, Father, every detail in our life. Father, continue to convict our hearts, God. Continue to mold and shape our lives, Father, as we come, Lord, in your presence. Holy Spirit, continue to, to move, Lord, in this place, God, in, in our lives uh, to the people, God. Meet them right where they're at, God. We pray right now, Father, that your anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage is Set the captive free, Lord. Prepare our hearts and our minds for what you have for us this day, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name and all the saints of God say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Today's scripture will be out of Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many are ready for the word of Almighty God? Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to begin reading in verse 15. We're going to read 15 to 20. It says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Verse 17 says, But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in to possess. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Verse 20 says that you may love the Lord your God and may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and your length of days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to his fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. And today I want to minister on that. I, I believe that people are in position right now, and, and God's going to meet you right where you're at. And I also believe that, that we can't just take for granted uh, that because God has brought us this far, that, that God is going to automatically pour out blessings uh, in our life or upon our lives, and there are two roads that are in front of you. In verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you in blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Every, every day when you wake up, God has given you an opportunity to live life and, and to taste the goodness of his grace and his glory. But tomorrow can, can go down another way. It doesn't have to be a blessing. It could be stress. It doesn't have to be joy. It could be misery. It doesn't have to be peace. Uh, it can be worry. And every morning before you get up at, or out of your bed, Moses speaks to us and he tells us that the choice is yours. God has set blessings before you. God wants to move in your life. God wants to handle your issues. But if you would walk in the fullness of God to what God has for you, then you got to make some choices, beloved. In this day of blessing or cursing, 
good and evil. The Bible says life or death. Every day we got to make a choice to stay committed to the commandments of God. Every morning when you wake up, you got to make up your mind that that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to be committed to. Uh, and that's and if you read Deuteronomy chapters 27 to 30, here's what's going to blow you away. More than 20 times in three chapters, Moses commands and encourages the children uh, uh, of Israel to stay committed to the ways of God. More than 20 times in three chapters, Moses says, obey God's commandments, his statutes, his judgments, his precepts, his laws. And whatever you do, walk in the ways of God. Don't wander to the left. Don't wander to the right. Write the word in the tablet of your heart. Write the word in your heart. Obey the voice of God that you would walk in life, the Bible says. And in blessings and walking good, you got to make a decision before your, heat, your feet hit the ground. That whatever comes your way, you're going to stay committed to the commandments of God. That's a decision that you've got to make daily. This is what Moses said. So take note that if you do, you can't go wrong. If you do this, you can't go wrong. If you obey, you will reap the blessings of joy and life. If you want to do what the Lord tells you to do, you will experience the fullness of the grace of God. I got to make a choice every day. I got to make that choice whether I'm going to handle it my way or I'm going to handle it God's way. God's way. And it's not always an easy choice. It doesn't come instinctively or, or automatic. Sometimes I want to handle it my way. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that, it could, that agree. But I'm going to make a choice today to stay committed to the commandments of God. Can I be real today with you? That's why you ought to read your Bible. That's why I, 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 on the group text, I text the men. And I'm adamant about that. Read your word. That's way, that way you'll know the commands of God. That's why you read your Bible, so that you can do what the Lord requires you to do. That's why we read our Bible, so that that, that life, that we, you can become conformed to the image of, of Jesus Christ, that you may be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what the Bible says. That's why you ought to read your Bible, because that way you'll know what the will for your life is. Because here's the truth of the matter. It doesn't matter how much you want to do right. If you don't know his word, you can't get right. Let me repeat that. It doesn't matter how much you want to get right. If you don't know his word, you can't get right. You got. To, I say that twice because if you're going to tweet it, you got to, you got to tweet it right. In Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, the Bible says... Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For their being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness. Having not submitted to the righteousness of God. Let me break it down to you in 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 in, in uh, in, in our terms, passion can never make up for ignorance. That no matter how much you want to walk in the righteousness of God and the Word of God, your desire can never make up for ignorance. you got to stay in the Word of God and embed it in your heart and tattoo it in your mind, not on your head, in your mind, so that when challenges come because they're, they're on its way. Challenges are coming that you'll remain committed to the oracles and to the word of God and what to God and to what God has called you to be the work that he has for you. God has promised them that it'll work, but he has never promised them or promised us that it would be easy. So stay committed, even though the battle is on the way and there will be many battles. It won't be easy. It won't be convenient. It won't always tickle. You won't always have goosebumps as, as confirmation. It, it's not always going to feel good. But do you know why that? Because sometimes when we go through struggles, it causes us to, to question our commitment 
to the commandments of God. Even though I'm living right, why is all this happening to me? I'm doing this. I'm being, I'm treating this brother or this sister good. As far as I know in, in the principles of God, but it's not working. Struggles come. This is what, this is what we get. Moses tells them time and time again, be committed to God and you'll find the fullness of God or whatever God has in store for you. And that's not the only decision that you've got to make. Not only do you have to make a decision to stay committed to the commandments of God, you have to make a decision to embrace the gift of grace of God in your life. I said you've got to stay committed and embrace the gift of grace in your life that God has given us. Moses shares with the children of Israel, that's what we're about to, we're, we're about to go, or you're about to go into a place that, that you you didn't earn. You don't have no business going in, and you didn't earn it. But because the Lord promised it to Abraham, get this, some of you are about to live into houses that you didn't even build. God is going to bless. Some of you are about to, to reap fruit that, that you had no, that you didn't even plow. Some of us are going to get things that we didn't even work for. That's everything that awaits us just from the grace of Almighty God. And, and, and we got to get to the other side. And there's nothing, and the thing about it, it has nothing to do with you. It's by the grace of God and the goodness of God. It's strictly a gift from God. It, it, it's not about, look what God has done for me. It's strictly about the grace of God. And realize that you didn't earn it. You shouldn't have it, and you certainly did, don't deserve it. But Almighty God, but the grace of God is so good that the Lord blessed you what you didn't even earn. Look at where the Lord has brought you from now. Think back and look at what God has done in your life. That's grace. Everything about, everything that you have and everything about what God has given you, that's what you call grace. Don't get, it, don't get it twisted. Don't think that you earned it. Grace. Moses reminded them that they were, they were the most stiff-necked people that he knew. They complained time and time again. Their parents complained. The, the, the kids were, were like that. But, you know, they, they were just like their mommy and their daddy. But in Deuteronomy chapters 1 through 4, he reminds them of how they messed up. And who they were as a people. And what God did in their life. And he reminded them about the faults that, we have, that they had. How many mistakes that they made when they, were, when they were first coming out of the wilderness. And yet, there they were. In the plains of Moab. Ready to, to, to step in. And God's grace is right in front of them. We know that we've all messed up royally. We've dropped the ball many times. But by the grace of Almighty God, He is with you. And He has something in store for us if we obey the commandments of God. And the reason why God tells them to choose is because there's an enemy that tries to remind you of the guilt. That whenever the Lord presents a gift of grace, the devil always has somebody with a gift of memory to remind you of why. That you're not worthy of the grace of God. But you have to make a choice. Which one are you going to allow to govern your day? Is it going to be the guilt of yesterday? Or the grace and the gift of God today? Am I going to walk in guilt? Or am I going to embrace the grace of God? And the gift of the grace of God that he has given me for new possibilities a new day, a new chance today, a second chance or another chance. In Romans 5.20, I wish I had a Bible reader here. Romans 5.20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might be about, but where sin abounded, grace abounded more and more. Now let me tell you why that's important. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 30 in our text, God basically tells him, I know you're going to mess up. I know you're going to blow it. I know you're not going to be committed 
to my commandments. And I know what I'm going to ask you. Sometimes you're going to fall short. And God allows them and he, and he speaks to them. But look what he said. But if you return to me, if you come back where you're supposed to be, if you get your act together, if you ask for forgiveness, if you repent, I will still bring you into the land. I know you're guilty, he says. I know you messed up. But if you come to me, I'll still bring you into the land. I know there's about five or, or, or six of you that, that don't like that, that, that didn't clap, that, that want to be a, a, a spiritual judge. But let me help you a little bit there. You remember when you were read your, your Miranda rights? Don't, don't get holy on me now. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in, in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, one will be a, appointed to you. You, you. you remember all that. You remember. But now they, you have what's called spiritual Miranda rights. That's when you fall short. That's when, 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 when stuff goes wrong and, and, and your stuff goes public. And everybody knows what you did. You have the right to repent. You have the, the right to fall on your knees. You have the right to be forgiven. You have the right to receive intercession by the blood of the Lamb. You have a right for a new day. You have the right for another chance. You have the right to get your life back in order for God. So the next time one of those sanctified judges comes with you, you, you can, or they want to take you down memory lane, you have the right to fall on your knees and ask for mercy. Confess your sins to the Lord's and be forgiven, beloved. I'm almost done here. You ought to be committed to the commandments of God. You ought to embrace the grace of God. And you ought to surrender to the sovereignty of Almighty God. When you read through Deuteronomy, and I know that you will uh, tonight when, when you have the time, then you can check the facts for yourself. You're going to find out that there's one commandment that keeps coming up time after time, chapter after chapter, page after page. It all goes a little something like this. Don't worship other gods. Repeatedly, repeatedly, it says, do not worship idols. But here's the ironic thing about that. The one thing they did the most was worship other gods. Why is that so important? Why is God so adamant about when you bow down to an idol? Because when you surrender, you give up control to something that has no power. You're bowing down to something that's a fake knockoff of what God can bring you. You're surrendering your destiny to a perpetrator, to a fake, to, to an imposter. And God said, it's not them who answered your prayer. It wasn't them who heard your cry. It wasn't them who parted the Red Sea. It wasn't them who brought you out of the wilderness. I'm the God that fed you with man of the Lord. Says, I'm the God that took care of you and your family in the time of me. I'm the God that made a way where there was no way. And how dare you come to a place where you surrender to something that has done nothing for you. Something that's never heard your prayers. Something that's never stood by your side. There's a difference between something that looks that it has control compared to somebody who is in full control. And whatever you do when you wake up, you got to make a decision that God is in control. Why is that so important? Because every day life presents us with uncertainties. Life presents us with issues. Even the, even the, the list of those who, who, who despise you or hate you, it, well, you can add one more to the list as the day goes by. Yeah, you, you can have, you'll be able to, to, to walk out of the house and, and, and not be afraid. Because life gives you reasons uh, that keep you afraid from even walking out your front door. 
The Lord is saying, before you leave the plains of Moab and walk into the day that I have gifted you by grace, before something goes down, I will not recognize the authority of anyone or anything in my life other than God, who answered my prayers, who woke me up this morning, who blessed my life, who saved my soul, who was worthy of my praise. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I don't know who needs to hear it, but God has placed this verse or these verses uh, in my heart today to lay the scriptures. God is telling us to choose life or death, blessing or cursing, to obey the commandments of God, to recognize no other authority but God Almighty. In our text, in, in, in verse 30, in verse 15, it says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I will announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong in your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go into to possess. Verse, verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. For he is your life and your length of days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. That is the word of the Lord. Today, God has given us an opportunity to make a choice. The choice is yours. All through the Bible, God has given us an opportunity. And even though many of us have, have gone astray, if we come back, he says, if we come back to him and obey and get ourselves in line and right with God, I believe right now is a, is a perfect opportunity. The churches are opening up. Some of you are, are, are debating whether to step in. Some of you are, are still afraid. We'll continue to have this, these services online. But there's some that are hungry that are waiting. And today we, we have a choice to make. Do we continue living to, for God? Or do we trust idols? Do we do I do we put our trust in in the system, in a job, maybe in a partner? Are we trusting men more than we trust God? Mm. Beloved, they'll, they'll fail. But the Bible says that the, the grass will fade away and the flowers will fall, but the word of God will last forever. God's word is concrete. It's set. You can trust it. And the best part of it, if you read the end of the book, we win. But God, beloved, wants you. He wants you more than, than you'll ever know. But if you get one thing today, I pray that you read his word. That you cling to him and his word and that you search the scriptures. The Bible says that when you search for me with your whole heart, then you will find me. He said, there I will be found. I pray today that a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. Jesus told the woman of the well, if you drink of this water, you'll thirst. But if you drink of the living water, you'll never thirst. 
I pray right now that there's someone watching that wants to make a commitment to follow God. I believe there's more than one person that is ready. God has been knocking at your door. The Bible says that he stands at the door and knocks. And if we open the door, he'll come in and he'll sup with us. That means to eat and drink with others. It's, it's signifying a relationship with Almighty God. And if you open up your heart and let him in, he'll come in. The Bible says that if any man or woman be in Christ, they're a new creation. Behold, new things come, the old is gone. God wants to give you a brand new life. God wants to give you a, a, a fresh start. And you're watching there today, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to, I want to lead you today. You've never invited Christ in your life. Or maybe you're, you're a backslider. Maybe you're listening today and, and God is calling you back home. God is saying, come. It's time. Maybe you're a prodigal son. A daughter, maybe you're out there wayward and, and you're tired of being sick and tired. And God is calling you. Love you. By his word, he's telling you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All. There's nothing that you can do that will separate you from God so that he doesn't hear your cry. If you call upon God, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what you did. God is faithful. He's not like a man that he should lie. And if you're there and you're not working with, you're not, you're not living for God, you've never invited him into your heart, there's a couple of different circumstances there. God knows. And I want you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died on that cross on Calvary. You, you shed your blood for me. You paid the price. Something that I couldn't pay. You paid it for me. And I thank you for that. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Your word says that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. And you know my heart. I stand transparent before you. If you said that prayer, the Bible says that you're safe. You have a relationship with God. Speak to Him. Talk to Him. A relationship doesn't just live with one person. He wants that. He loves you more than anything, more than, than you could ever imagine. And He'll give you the ability to do the things that you long for. He'll put in your heart a peace that surpasses all understanding. That will guard your heart in Christ Jesus. And I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for hearing their cry. The Bible says that my sheep, they hear my voice. And they won't listen to a hire. They hear my voice. So if you're out there and you're hearing this voice that is calling you, God is your Father. And if you've gone astray, I, I believe today is the day where you make a new commitment. You don't look to the right or to the left. It's, it's you and God. It's a personal relationship. Hallelujah. Maybe you're out there and, and, uh, and you think everything's okay. Maybe you like God for someone else. Well, that sounds like a perfect picture of how I was. I went to a church because I thought maybe that it would benefit my family. But you know what? It was a Holy Ghost set up. And God spoke to my heart. I'll never forget it. He said, come. Follow me. Follow me. Hallelujah. And if you're out there and you know exactly what I'm talking about, I want you to, to say this prayer. Say, thank you, Lord. For everything that you've done for me, continue to lead me and guide me. Your word is true. You have given me the breath of life to continue. Help me to serve you effectively with my whole heart. I stand transparent before you. Hallelujah. You said that today. I believe God, and you meant it from your heart. I believe God's going to do a new thing, a fresh start. And I pray today that you were blessed 
uh, in this word. And I pray that you would continue to have a blessed time. Pray for the churches and the pastors of those that are opening. That God continue to guide them with wisdom. That he keep the people safe. Hallelujah. And I want to thank you again for watching. We love you. God bless you.